Fantasy Flight Games offers up 11 new player cards in its latest Mythos pack, Blood on the Altar. Will the players be appeased, or will the designers feel their eternal wrath? We'll get to the heart of the matter in today's TWID. The stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I am your host, the man from Leng. Thank you very much for joining me today. On today's episode, I am reviewing the player cards from Blood on the Altar, the third Mythos pack in the Dunwich Legacy cycle. There are 11 new player cards in this pack, which we can use to tune our decks. So let's take a look at them, starting with the first card in the pack, which is prepared for the worst. It is a one-cost guardian event. It has an intellect and combat icon. It is a tactic, and its game text reads, Search the top nine cards of your deck for a weapon asset and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. So this is one of the, I believe it's one of the first tutors in the game that we have, and it is for weapons. So if you absolutely need to draw yourself a weapon, uh, you can't go wrong with prepared for the worst. If you take a look at uh, some of the statistics behind the card, if you're playing a typical Roland uh, Banks deck with five weapons, his 38 special, two machetes, and two 45 automatics, you've got about an 86% chance of starting with one in your opening hand. If you add one prepared to, for the worst to your deck, that uh, percentage improves to 90.89 that you'll start with one. If you have two prepared to the worst, you're at 94.26. Now, if you don't happen to draw a weapon in your opening hand, and that's aggressive, that's mulliganing aggressively, basically ditching your entire opening hand to draw five new cards if you don't draw a weapon. You, if you do end up with a prepared for the worst and no weapon, you've got about an 88.17% chance of pulling a weapon on the first turn if you play prepared for the worst. So if you need a weapon, this is the way to get it. Almost, uh, it's not an absolute guarantee it can whiff, but you, uh, you do have a very good chance of getting one. And certainly I have been... I have played the odd game of Arkham Horror where I have not started with a weapon in my opening hand and things have spiraled out of control from there. Uh, I think this card, it may not be an auto, an auto include right now, but I think uh, as FFG has spoiled some, uh, some weapons in future packs that are quite expensive in terms of experience point cost. Uh, having something like this to be able to pull those because you're probably only going to be able to afford to buy one of them with your experience. Having this to pull that uh, weapon would certainly help. I think this card will also come into its own uh, when we see more investigators. Uh, FFG has already spoiled one, at least one investigator that has a deck size larger than 30 cards. So being able to add a card like this to search your top nine cards uh, for a weapon would be very helpful if those deck sizes do increase. The next card in the pack is Keen Eye. It is a guardian asset. It costs three experience. It is a talent and it is permanent. And it has the text it has a free trigger, spend two resources, you get plus one intellect until the end of the phase. Or, or it has the free trigger, spend two resources, you get plus one combat until the end of the phase. Now when this card was spoiled, I was pretty excited about it and uh, I thought it would be a, a guaranteed include in, uh, in a lot of Guardian decks. Now that I've had a chance to play with it, though, I'm not so certain I'm crazy about this card. Playing it in a Roland Banks deck, I found that it can be very uh, challenging to get 
to maximize uh, the benefit from spending those two resources. The, the bonus lasts until the end of the phase, but if you're at locations that have only one or two clues, you're really overspending your resources to get those bonuses. I think this card works a little bit better uh, for the combat because typically uh, if you're going up against a boss or something, you're probably going to be attacking it three, using your entire turn to attacking it three, attacking it three times that turn. The problem is you're going to also encounter a lot of those little monsters along the way, like the Whooper Wills or some of the, uh, I'm thinking of the gangsters from Naomi's crew, the mobsters and the Obanion thug. Those are monsters that you want to be able to take down with one shot. So if you're spending two resources to get that plus one combat, that's not a very good deal. So I'm a little, I'm, I'm not as wild about this card as, as I was at first. I think it might fit better in a uh, Zoe Samurai deck. Zoe's got a little bit more resource generation than Roland does and so she will have more resources to spend. When I was playing Roland, the, the price of this card really adds up quickly and it can be quite challenging to maximize the, the benefit you get out of it. So I'm not sure it's the auto-include that, that I thought it was. Uh, certainly the, the fact that it's a permanent is, is awesome because starting with this in play is great not having to spend that two resources for a physical training uh, is, you know, that's invaluable. But I find physical training is, is slightly better in a way just because you are, you know, you can spend one resource to get that plus one when you need it and you're not overspending in those situations when you don't. Keep that in mind if you're considering uh, purchasing this card as you go through the campaign. The first Seeker card in the pack is Preposterous Sketches. It is a two-cost event. It has a willpower and intellect icons. It has the insight trait, and it has the game text, play only if there is a clue on your location. Draw three cards. Now in most uh, LCGs and card games in general, draw is uh, amazing. Cards that draw you cards are typically amazing and they will are usually auto-includes. The obvious comparison here is the Seeker card Cryptic Research, which is a, a zero cost event and is fast and you can play it during your turn and choose an investigator at your location and that investigator draws three cards. The problem is is that cryptic research is four experience points which is a huge chunk of change uh, in the Dunwich Legacy campaign. That's pretty expensive and I'm not sure it's worth it particularly when you've got a card like Preposterous Sketches which doesn't cost you any experience and we'll draw you three cards as long as there is a clue at your location. The opportunity cost for preposterous sketches isn't that high. There's usually a clue. Um, most locations have a clue at some point in the game, so you won't be lacking in opportunities to play this card. Uh, draw is a bit of a double-edged sword in this game because you do have those weaknesses lurking in your draw deck and some of them can be quite painful if you draw them at the wrong time. However, you need to fill your hand quickly. I can't think of a better way right now to do that than by playing preposterous sketches. Certainly, we've also, like I mentioned earlier, we have, FFG has spoiled some investigators that have larger deck sizes uh, than 30 cards. So if you're able to pack a card like Preposterous Sketches that will enable you to draw through that deck a lot faster than you would normally. The next Seeker card in the pack is Higher Education. It is an asset. It costs three experience points and it is a talent. It is permanent. While you have five or more cards in your hand, Higher Education gains the free trigger, spend one resource, you get plus two willpower for this skill test, 
and the free trigger spend one resource you get plus two intellect for this skill test this card is bonkers good i mean any you can spend one resource to get plus two of anything that's going to be amazing and the opportunity cost for this is incredibly low i mean all you need is five cards in your hand you start this you start with this card in play at the beginning of the game and you've got five cards in your hand so as long as you're able to manage your hand effectively you will have access to these great skill bonuses for willpower and intellect certainly seekers like daisy and rex have access to uh, dr mylan christopher who can give them all the resources they need to plow into this thing uh, so you could get some ridiculously high uh, numbers if you needed to for willpower and intellect maybe this card will uh, prompt more uh, daisy sorcerer builds uh, where she dips into the uh, the mystic cards because she has that easy access to uh, willpower boosts with this card I think if, if you're playing a seeker this card is is probably an auto include just I mean the bonuses are just so good that uh, you'll be hard-pressed to pass them up of, of all the permanent talents in in this uh, mythos pack I think this one is probably the strongest of them all the first rogue card in the pack is their talent. It is an asset, like they all are. It costs three experience points. This is Streetwise. It is permanent, and it has the free trigger. Spend two resources, you get plus three intellect for this skill test. Or spend two resources, you get plus three agility for this skill test. Now, having played uh, a bunch of rogue lately, rogues were really lacking in, uh, in intellect power, and this card solves that problem. It gives them uh, a, a huge intellect boost, as well as that agility boost that uh, rogues really enjoy. A card like this is automatically going in my Jenny Barnes deck. Of all the investigators, Jenny is probably the most well-positioned to afford a talent like this and certainly spending two resources to get plus three intellect or plus three agility is a is a huge boon uh, skids also if he's uh, playing solo would probably uh, like a talent like this the intellect boost is always going to come in handy in whatever scenario you're playing and the agility boost is extremely helpful considering that uh, I mean rogues already have a high agility uh, evading is always strong and then there's the rogue cards like sneak attack that key off of of that agility trait and being being able to pump uh, your agility by plus three to succeed at that agility test is huge so uh, this is uh, this is another extremely strong talent. Um, Rogue sorely needed something like this, and I'm looking forward to getting this into my Jenny Barnes deck and playing around with it in the future. The next Rogue card in the pack is Lone Wolf. It is an asset. It costs one resource. It has an agility icon. It is a talent, and it has limit one per investigator. It has the response, when your turn begins, if there are no other investigators at your location, gain one resource. Again, this card is bonkers good. It's uh, in solo play, this is an auto-include for sure. I mean, just being able to, to get that extra resource every turn for doing nothing, um, as long as there's no investigator at your location. In solo play, that's never gonna be a problem. So that's just a free resource a turn. The earlier you draw this card, the more you're going to reap the rewards. So if you can get this out uh, on the first, you know, first turn or shortly thereafter, those resources are just going to pile up over the course of the game. In multiplayer, it's a little trickier to play because you are going to have to try to stay away from other investigators, but the way the game works uh, in that the investigators can take their turns at their own discretion means that you can work it so if you happen to be at a location with another investigator they might choose to go first and move away 
so that you can get that uh, one resource bonus. One or two copies of this is going in pretty much every rogue deck uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, the Dunwich Investigators that can take cards from other classes will also uh, will also be eyeing this card. So this is a, another great card for rogues. Rogues really did well in this pack. The first mystic card in the pack is a skill. It is Defiance. It has a wild icon. It has the innate trait and the game text. Before revealing chaos tokens for this test, Choose one of the following symbols, the skull, the cultist, the tablet, or the elder thing. Ignore the effects of the chosen symbol during this test, including its modifier. So this, uh, this is an interesting card in that not only are you ignoring the modifier, so a skull, say if you're playing Essex County Express uh, toward the end of that scenario and your skull token is worth minus four or minus five, not only are you treating that as a zero, but you're treating any of the effects caused by that, by that token. Uh, you're just nullifying them so you don't have to worry about it. So all those uh, effects like add a doom to a cultist in play, or discard a card from your hand. All of that stuff just goes away. Now, the problem with this card, I think, is that I think if you're playing it to try to blank the effects, that's really going to be difficult to do. If you take a look at the probability, uh, you know, in a 16 token chaos bag, your chances of pulling uh, a 1, a 0, or an Elder Sign is about 25%. If you play this card, you're improving your odds by 6.25% if you blank the cultist or tablet. And if you blank the, uh, the skull, you're at 37.50%. So that's a 12.5% increase, which basically brings you up to what Jim Culver is doing naturally if Jim is playing with a standard chaos bag and he's treating the skulls as zeros. He's at 37.50. I'm just not sure if this card is strong enough to make it into Mystic decks. Trying to choose the token that you're going to pull is pretty difficult to do, and chances are this is going to whiff a lot more than it, than it hits. I mean, when it does hit, it's going to be amazing. It might win you a game. It might, you know, change the the entire tenor of of what was going on but more often than not you're probably not going to be drawing one of those tokens those special tokens and you're just going to be pitching this for the plus one uh, the wild icon now somebody who i think if you want to go all in on chaos bag manipulation uh, certainly jim culver would benefit from this card uh, more than other investigators. If uh, Jim has a grotesque statue, say, and the if you're just considering the standard 16 token chaos bag, he has a 62.5% chance of pulling a plus one zero elder sign or, or a blank skull with the grotesque statue. That increases to uh, 70% if you play uh, this card to blank the cultist or the tablet. Now, obviously, in the Dunwich Legacy campaign, I mean, maybe you want to consider this card if you've added a lot of tablets uh, to the chaos bag. Say uh, you failed to save the students or you lost Adam Lynch uh, at the Miskatonic Museum. Maybe you want to blank the Elder Thing token because you uh, cheated in The House Always Wins or you... Uh, took the Necronomicon at the end of the Miskatonic Museum. You could do, you could try to use this card for that uh, to blank those tokens, but I just, I just don't think that it does enough to warrant inclusion in a lot of decks. I think there's going to be much more powerful cards to include. The next Mystic card in the pack is the class's Talent, and that is Blood Pact. This one's been spoiled for a while. It is an asset. It costs three experience. 
It is not a talent. It is a spell and pact. It is permanent. And it has the free response trigger. Add one doom to doom to blood pact. You get plus three willpower for this skill test. Limit once per test. And the free trigger. Add one doom to blood pact. You get plus three combat for this skill test. Limit once per test. Now, I'll be the first to admit I am not a big fan of <laughs> cards that add doom to other cards in play. Uh, cards like the Arcane Initiate and Blood Pact to me feel like you are just playing with fire and I feel that the uh, the agenda is advancing. It's already advancing too fast for my taste and I don't need to do anything to speed that up by adding doom uh, to something like Blood Pact to get uh, plus three willpower or plus three combat. That said, Blood Pact is going to be extremely powerful in a couple of those turns, the before the turns right before the uh, the uh, agenda advances when you can go hog wild with this and just load up the doom because as soon as that agenda advances all the doom will be taken off this card. So as long as you can cram in a whole bunch of tests, say you're using your shriveling or your your fire axe or, or things like that, uh, you could uh, boost boost all the tests uh, that you could possibly want in that period, knowing that uh, all that doom will disappear. I'm not sure whether I'm, I'm all that keen on spending three experience points on a card that has such a limited use though. You know, take something like um, the Essex County Express. I mean, it has five five agendas, so you're going to get a, a little bit more use out of this than uh, in that particular scenario. But if you're playing a scenario that has only two or three agendas, then you're going to be, I mean, there's really only a couple of opportunities to use this card. It's going to be extremely powerful when you do, but it's quite possible that you simply won't be in a position uh, on those turns before the agenda advances to use this card, in which case you've spent that three experience points for nothing. Now, maybe an investigator like Marie Lambeau, who is able to manipulate the Doom tokens on the table, can get a little bit more uh, oomph out of this card, uh, but since she hasn't been released, I'm not going to look too closely at that. With the investigators we have now, there is no way of, of manipulating the doom on the table, so uh, your chance to use this card is going to be fairly limited. And I think for me, this card is going to be staying in the box for the time being until we do get somebody who can move those doom tokens around or spend them or get rid of them in some way. The first survivor card in the pack is Rise to the Occasion. It is a skill. It has three wild icons. It is innate and it has the text commit only to a skill test you are performing and only if the difficulty of that test is at least two higher than your base skill value. Now I wasn't sure quite what to think of this card when I first saw it, but the trick to remember with this card is base skill value. So if you have somebody like Wendy Adams on the table with a, uh, a cat burglar, say, you are adding this to her base skill value of 4, not 5, uh, because of the plus 1 from the cat burglar. Same goes for her woefully low uh, strength, or her woefully low combat, sorry. Uh, so this can take you from being 2 down to 1 up, uh, which is a pretty... I mean, that's a huge jump. If you've got another skill card, you can play on top of that, or you've got a couple of those passive boosts to get you to a plus two. That's going to be a, a succeed in most cases if you're using a standard chaos bag. This card also works extremely well with uh, Will to Survive, that uh, the uh, survivor... Uh, event that enables you to ignore, you don't have to draw from the chaos bag uh, for your turn. So this can, that can turn, you know, if you combo this card with that one, you can turn, you know, uh, 
uh, skill tests that you would probably fail into automatic successes. Uh, the versatility of this is uh, amazing. I mean, being able to play three wild icons on any skill test that you require is incredibly strong. So I think a lot of investigators who are able to take this will certainly take a, a really close look at it. Uh, certainly Wendy. Uh, I'll be playing this, I think, in the combo Wendy deck that I've been playing around with lately. Uh, those three wild icons are just so strong. Uh, also, uh, Ashcan Pete would like this, and I think a lot of the Dunwich investigators who can take the cards from other classes uh, should consider something like this to boost those skill tests uh, that they need. So this is a, a, a strong card, a good card, and I'm looking forward to playing it. The uh, other survivor card in the pack is its talent. It is Scrapper. It is an asset. It costs three experience points and it is permanent. It has the free trigger. Spend one resource, you get plus one combat for this skill test, or spend one resource, you get plus one agility for this skill test. So this is basically a permanent hard knocks. Now this card is automatically going into my uh, Wendy deck. It has uh, the two the two uh, skill tests that she needs. I think she needs the most that the combat to uh, improve her woefully low combat and that agility in case she needs to evade or in the case of the combo Wendy deck uh, when it comes to play your sneak attack being able to spend resources to boost that agility test that much higher uh, will help you take down some of those big bad bosses a whole lot easier uh, I think Ash can Pete would would like this as well you can uh, certainly if you've got Duke on the table uh, sometimes Ashcan struggles to, uh, if those monsters have a higher uh, combat than that base 4 that Duke gives him, uh, this will certainly help you uh, boost that up a little bit higher and, uh, and solve those problems for him. So I think this is this is another one of those uh, the talents. I think it's one of the stronger talents along with uh, Streetwise and Higher Education. Of the five, I would probably rank Higher Education as the best, followed by Streetwise and Scrapper, and then I would probably put uh, Keen-Eyed and Blood Pack towards the bottom. The final card in the pack is Emergency Cache. This is the level 2 version of that event from the core set. It has the supply trait and it has the text gain three resources and draw one card. So the two experience points for the uh, draw one card has been well established. There are lots of cards that do that now. Lucky uh, is one I think of off the top of my head. Uh, I believe Taunt is, also has a similar effect in the Guardian class. Uh, Emergency Cache, I mean, it's an amazing card. It's, a, it's an auto-include in pretty much every Investigator deck right now uh, as a two-of. And uh, so this one is that much better in that it gives you that extra card draw on top of the three resources. It does cost two experience points, so I'm not sure uh, whether it is one of the first cards that you'll be upgrading to, but if you have some experience uh, left over towards the end of the campaign, you certainly couldn't go wrong by uh, picking up a copy of this and getting a little bit more card draw out of that uh, out of your emergency cache. So overall, I'd say this pack is uh, it's a really good pack. I like a lot of the the uh, the cards in it. I think that the uh, the Guardians uh, struggled a little bit in this pack. Prepared for the worst is useful. Keen Eye, I'm not so crazy about. Uh, your experience may vary. The Seekers did very well with uh, higher education and uh, preposterous sketches. Uh, the Rogues got some much needed boost with Streetwise and uh, Lone Wolf. Uh, the Mystics. 
I'm I wasn't I'm not particularly crazy about Defiance or Blood Pact. Defiance just seems like it's going to be too hard to play um, to use effectively, and Blood Pact, I don't like playing with fire. And I think the the uh, survivors did uh, very well as well with uh, Rise to the Occasion and uh, Scrapper. Both of those cards will be going in the combo Wendy deck that I've been playing around with recently, and I think they'll give that deck a um, take it to the next level, really. That's going to do it for me today. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you would leave me a thumbs up. If you agree, disagree, or just want to chat about this great game, please leave a comment down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to be alerted when I release new content. If you'd like to drop me a line, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there and happy investigating.